What is going on, everybody? A lot of you have reached out to me about Ben Armstrong, about what's going on, about the video that I made the other day, about the legal filings that happened just recently. I kind of read off everything that was going on, gave you a synopsis of what's happening, but I never really gave you my opinion. And last night, Ben reached out to me. He said, hey, man, would you mind if I just posted it on my YouTube channel? It's going to get more views. It's going to get more traction. It's going to get more engagement in that fashion. I said, sure, go ahead. And, uh, you know, I think now more people are going to find out about Ben's side of what happened. We don't know. We do have a little bit of an idea of what TJ says. We heard a lot of different things that TJ said. Uh, it, it, in fact, we heard an interview with Altcoin Daily, which I'm going to reference at one point here. But I want to say, what if this is all a big grift? What if the deal here wasn't really about the company. They're not using BitBoy Crypto. They're not using all of these things. They're trying to shed assets. They're trying to liquidate the company because they can't keep it afloat in my estimation. I mean, I don't know for sure. I don't know what the finances of the company are. I know from the outside in, I know what kind of engagement I get. I know what kind of money I make. Um, I have a channel that's bigger than this already, by the way, and it's, it's a sports channel. And those two combined, get more engagement than Discover Crypto. And by the way, if you want to fact check me, it's the Chicago Bears cast. Um, I get as much get engagement as they get and I, that doesn't pay the bills. That's that's So they can't be, there has to be uh, something to it, right? Well, those things that there has to be to it came up in the New York Times article that came out over the weekend. Now guys, before I get started, if you like this content, please make sure that you like the hit the like button, the subscribe button, the bell to be notified of future content. We're going to lead off. I'm going to bang around here a little bit because I kind of opened up just a few windows at a time and I couldn't believe some of the things that were just kind of coming together. And the question that it was on my mind is, is this just a giant grift? Are they just trying to um, drain the liquidity, if you will, from the from from hit networks, discover crypto? Are they just trying to uh, use everything as exit liquidity. Because here's the thing. There was even a statement by TJ. Now, I've jokingly called him Lady Frame. Um, I, I, and I assume he's a boy. I, I don't have any reason to think otherwise. Uh, there's hair on the face. I assume. I don't, I don't try to assume anybody's gender. But it seems reasonable that we could consider him a boy. Um, so I jokingly refer to. And I take Ben's side. I take Ben's side because it is my opinion that... The that TJ shed and everybody associated with TJ were looking to steal a company from a man. And I'm not saying, by the way, that they were looking to do it because they were evil. Uh, I'm not saying that they were looking to do it for any other reason than it was just another grift. And I'm going to get to the the wife of the grift and their association with an actual grifter, wedding photos etc cetera, etc cetera. so this is going to take not long it's going to take a few moments here to kind of go through this this is difficult to, to to kind of make your way through and i thought that the first thing that i should do is i should start with one of the biggest lies that you were told by uh tj shed jr i i think i i, I think it's timothy the 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 dad and there's tj the son now guys I want it to be specific because there's no receipts that they've given that have have coordinated with any of what they are trying to, in my opinion, deceive you with. And they will tell you, well, that's because an investigation's underway. No, it's not. Mm -mm. No. Uh, in fact, let's start off with just a little bit of information. Fasten your safety belts, kids. All right. So uh, the first thing that we're going to go over, and I think this is important, okay, uh, Cassandra Wolf. Cassie Wolf. Now, uh, they had a relationship. It was an extramarital relationship. And if you are somebody who doesn't condone that, then you have to make a decision about whether you like Ben Armstrong or Cassie or anything like that. That isn't part of my equation. And it's not because that doesn't enter into why you would take a company from somebody. So for me, that's not a reason to get rid of somebody. In fact, uh, some of the uh, out there said, well, you know, it's illegal in Georgia. Yeah, it's a misdemeanor. Uh, you don't go to jail. And you don't go to prison for misdemeanors. You get fined for that. Now, um, and I'm not, by the way, I'm not defending 
I'm not defending anybody or anybody in this. Uh, going through uh, family strife is painful for everybody, and it should be noted, and we should recognize the pain that everybody goes through in these contexts. So, you know, I do want to say that if this is something that you don't like Ben for, fair enough. If it's something you don't like uh, Cassie for, fair enough. It's okay for you not to like these people and still be able to recognize the grift that might be happening here. Now, I'm going to point this out, and this is in the article. At the same time, Mr. Shedd was starting to hear other worrisome stories about his business partner. In a September lawsuit, he accused Mr. Armstrong of unlawfully directing and diverting as much as $50,000 a month to Miss Wolf, with whom he was having an extramarital affair. Okay, so Mr. Armstrong had also stolen tens of thousands of dollars in crypto from the firm, the complaint said, including several digital collectibles known as N NFTs. Mr. Shedd triggered a clause in the holding company's operating agreement that allowed him to buy out Mr. Armstrong's majority stake. Now, let's address a couple of things here. Uh, this says unlawfully directing and diverting as much as $50,000 a month to, Mr. to Ms. Wolf. There is no receipt for this. However, what we do have is this. This is an email from TJ at the direction of Ben. Now, why would that happen? Because Ben is the boss. Ben makes the decisions here. Okay. TJ says, Cassie, I just talked more with Ben and we can do 5% on the stake deal. Assuming that works out, we are anticipating we shouldn't need further sponsors for the YouTube channel. If it goes a different direction, we can still do 5% for future sponsors on YouTube and I'll update the service agreement accordingly. So there is a service agreement and it is the understanding and verification by Cassie that she did not trust that this was going to happen. So this was done through Stake. Stake is the partner that she negotiated the deal, stake.com. Who paid Cassie now becomes the question. And the answer to that is Stake. Now, let me go back one more time. TJ confirmed 5% of the Stake deal was to be payment to Cassie, if we're clear. And there it is right there. He's saying that Mr. Armstrong is unlawfully directing and diverting as much as 50000 a month to Miss Wolf. Now, I'm not a genius. That's called a lie. The people at Hit Networks are lying to you about Cassie. Now, again, this does not change how you feel about the personal relationship that, that, that took place between a relationship that has not changed at all. And in fact, has only, uh, in my estimation here, continued to expand over time and get deeper as their connection seems to be. So um, could it be that Ben was in a relationship that there was a problem in and made a mistake getting out of it, didn't do it the right way? I, I mean, I guess so, but it's not for me to judge. It's for me to point out that you can have whatever decision you want about that, but this right here, this right here, there's two things right here. This is TJ telling you that Ben was diverting unlawfully money. And then here's TJ confirming that it was actually okay. That's called a lie. That means you're being deceived by TJ Shedd. That means that there is deception taking place here. So now that should cause you at this point to question everything going forward. Now, does that mean that there's, does that mean that Ben's innocent? No, doesn't mean doesn't mean anything. It, it means that TJ's lying, or this is the appearance of a lie because I have the email. We have it. It's there. But let's move on because there is more. Now, there's another piece here. His investments portfolio was surging. At the market's peak, he has said he had about $40 million in crypto, but the line between his personal finances and the corporate accounts was blurry. Now that, that, let's remember that right there. Most of these assets technically belong to BJ Investment Holdings, a company that he owned with TJ Shedd, a fellow crypto enthusiast who managed the production business. Now, TJ, basically a nobody that that has a, a, a you know third rate channel, kind of like mine. I mean, you know, hashtag not bragging, but he enters into a partnership and an agreement. And now they have a let's call it a $40 million empire, right? But let's assume that all of that $40 million is in crypto. Let's assume that it's part of the company. Let's assume that you know the market, which drew down 75%, turned that 40 million into 10 million. You know, there, all kinds of different things. And they spent money. There's a Lamborghini out here somewhere, right? So they spent money, they did stuff. Um, but now we have um a $40 million empire, and then here we have. Uh, and this, I'm going to suggest to you that 
I'm not going to play this for you. I'm going to suggest that you go to the one hour and 14 minute and 55 second uh, moment of the altcoin daily interview that was published four months ago. And I want you to listen to TJ Shett. And he said that we've got somebody, you know, trying to find out what the buyout offer would be. Do you know that to this point, there is no buyout offer. What's the value of the company? Well, at one point it was 40 million and 66% owner of a company. You do have an obligation for expenses, et cetera, et cetera, for the survival of the company. Uh, and there's drawdown there. There, there has to be draw down because you had to take a loss in a bear market. I'm sure you're stable in some way, but you have expenses. There are a lot of things going on. So let's uh, consider that that it's going to be muddy. It's going to be murky, right? But they're doing a valuation on the company to this date. Four months later, there's nothing so far. There's been no valuation. There's been no movement. What they're trying to do is choke out, in my opinion, Ben Armstrong. They're trying to get him to capitulate for any amounts. They are dragging their feet. And now what are they doing while they're dragging their feet? Well, uh, I would posit this. If your company is a failure and you are not worth it, if investors, if advertisers, if people who would normally pay a channel, for example, Ben Armstrong has a stake deal, um, Discover Crypto, Hit Networks, they do not have a, a stake deal, right? If that's the case, then what is the value of your company? Well, if you sever ties with that person, then you would be owing that person the valuation of the company at the time of separation, which at that point was $1 million per month on a stake deal. Now, we can come to this stake company. They had a contract worth $1 million a month. Now, that was, uh, if, if we say one year at $1 million a month, that's $12 million. Um, the, the, between the EBITDA and payroll, you're probably looking at about 50%. So $500,000, uh, that's over the course of 12 months. That's $6 million. So 3.6, I want to say, 3.7 million, at, at least, would be due Ben Armstrong. Now, if I told Ben, I'll give you $3.7 million for your company, he would laugh in my face because he knows that it's worth and it has a value of a lot more. However, let's just use that as a frame of reference and say that there is some value there. Now, uh, it should also be pointed out that at some point there were over 60 employees uh, in the company. Um, back in Georgia, three male employees. Uh, now we're going a little bit further here, but there were 60 employees at Hit Networks. Why? Why? Cryptos are us. I wonder how many people George hires. Um, I saw the picture of Crypto Banter. I saw... And it looks like you could take Rand Nooner and both of his eyes and they all split the employees up and it's less than 30 people, right? And, and they're arguably uh, generating more traffic right now, certainly more than Discover Crypto. So 60 employees, it, it looks like there was a drain here they're, they're, that, that TJ was doing something here to drain money from the company. Now, does that mean that it's nefarious? No, it means that he was hiring friends bringing in a bunch of his buddies, right? So again, I urge you to go one uh, one hour, 14 minutes, 55 seconds into this and go listen to the buyout, okay? This, 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 this does it for you. Now, what does it look like to be part of Discover Crypto? If you're part of Discover Crypto, what does it look like? Well, these are the comment sections of this video. Now, this guy, um, I, I, I don't know who this person is, okay? Um, it's Joshua Jake is this, this person's name, right? Uh, he's attacked me. I've attacked him. Um, I'm hilarious. He's, he, he, you see it, right? Um, so he, I mean, again, not assuming pronouns, but he is now kind of the main guy. And I, I mean, he's probably an entertaining sort of guy. I mean, he's wearing glasses. That does mean entertaining, at least to me anyway, right? Um, but I think he's a, a, a TikTok guy, you know, and, and could be very well. A, a very engaging sort, right? So this video is two weeks old and it's got 22,000 views. I'm not going to play it for you, but um, the, the, you know, they, they, they do all the things here and they've got a partner named Blowfin. Blowfin, by the way, um, that's just a, a centralized exchange. No, no offense to Blowfin, by the way, if somebody from Blowfin ever watches, you, you do you boo-boo. But as we go down here, who is Blowfin partnering with? By the way, I did notice that that just recently Discover Crypto is partnering with Lux Algo. So Lux Algo, if any one of you guys are watching, by the way, um, 
as of today, I will no longer be partnered with Lux Algo. I was partnered with them before. Uh, description down below, but uh, I think it's time to to move on from that. No offense to Lux Algo, but you make your choice. We all make our choices, right? But um, this is what you get in their comment section. As a cryptocurrency project, I'd see immense potential in being featured on this channel. The high views and engagement levels suggest an eager audience. Sponsored project reviews would likely thrive as the audience is enthusiastic about project support. Now, I just want you, I want you to point out, I'm going to get a little deep in this for just a second here, but I, but I want you to see what's happening here. Um, they're buying views and they're buying comments to make it look like people are watching their videos. Now, 22,000 views sounds okay, but what's going on here? Okay, well, let's go down here. It's astonishing how these individuals at Discover Crypto have seamlessly stepped into the channel's leadership role. Their cryptocurrency knowledge is impressive. I can hardly recall the previous host, Long Live Discover Crypto. Such a big space, but where are all the people? Getting promoted on this channel would be a smart move for any crypto... Guys, look at this. It's right here. Right here. Uh, somebody whose name you can't pronounce. Somebody whose name you can't pronounce with a bunch of numbers right after their name. Getting promoted on this channel uh, would be a smart move for any cryptocurrency project. The substantial views and engagement create a promising environment for sponsored reviews. That's the same thing. Twice, right? Isn't that, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, I mean, I want to say that it is, but we're not done yet. Um, as a cryptocurrency project, I'd aspire to be featured on this channel. The substantial viewership and engagement levels indicate a receptive audience. And, and by the way, I had people, when I said this, people reached out to me and they're like, you can't be, no, they're not doing that. That's, that's, that's just, you know, that's just sometimes it was just random people who are commenting on it. No, it's very specific. And I'm going to show you in just a second. Another one, same thing. Um, a, a name I can't pronounce with a bunch of letters, with a bunch of numbers at the end. Promoting on this channel is a no-brainer for any cryptocurrency project. Getting promoted on this channel is a strategic move for any cryptocurrency project. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's going to get better. DZ's fashion makeover is fantastic. Suspenders and no hat contribute to his professional appearance. Uh, right down here, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Uh, there's going to be more. Being promoted on this channel. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, as a cryptocurrency project, this channel would be an excellent choice for promotion. Getting promoted on this channel would be a dream come true for any cryptocurrency project. If I were a cryptocurrency project, this channel would be at the top of my list of promotions. It's truly remarkable how these individuals that discover crypto has seemingly stepped into the leadership role. Guys, did you hear me just say this with a few different letters, a few different words? Because um, you should have, because here's what's coming up next. DZ's fashion makeover is fantastic. Suspenders and no hat make him appear more professional. Um, and, and by the way, I recommend go look just just go look if i were a cryptocurrency project i'd consider this channel a golden opportunity guys this is the second time you're being lied to they're buying views and they're and they're buying uh comments on their channel allegedly or there are a lot of people in a lot of parts of the country uh, of the world uh that are not in english speaking nations or at least do not have english sounding names who apparently speak perfect english and all have the same opinion about uh g d d d d c's about d z and how he has no hair and a hat or no i'm no hat not no hair no hat and uh, suspenders um and and um it's hard not to admire joshua jake his unwavering positivity and energetic approach to crypto are impressive um and then as you continue to go down here you will find the same comments over and 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 over again. Okay. And it's not just this one. Um, uh, Nick DeBondi is not just a content lead. He's also remarkably attractive and always puts God first. Uh, says the name I can't pronounce with all the numbers behind it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Joshua Jake's expertise in cryptocurrency is truly exceptional. Guys, are you getting at this point? Wait, wait. Joshua Jake is a real asset. His infectious positivity and energy <laughs> enhances credibility in the crypto world. Credibility in the crypto world? Are you kidding me? Are, are you kidding me? Are you watching this? Are you seeing what's happening right here? Are you paying attention? Credibility. And again, I don't dislike Joshua Jake. I don't know him or care about him. I, I, None of that matters. In fact, I will tell you guys a secret. A couple months ago, one of my friends reached out to me about mining. And this has nothing to do with Joshua, by the way. Uh, but I reached out to Nick DeMondi and I said, hey, look, um, Nick, I can't help this guy if you can help this guy. Because, you know, to be fair, like I, I, don't, I want that guy to be successful. I don't want that guy to be harmed by my lack of knowledge in mining for a cryptocurrency. So I sent him because, because Nick DeMondi talks about it all the time. So 
um, I, I recognize there's value to some of these people. I, I recognize that these guys, you know, they, 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 they're, they're some of them that do have knowledge about cryptocurrency. I recognize these things, but you know, at the same time, um, I don't know them and I don't owe them and I don't care, but I do recognize value, but let's move on because there's a, a little bit more to it. Now, um, today, 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 they told you two things. They told you it's over and they did it with Solana. And then they put Solana on here and they told you to sell now. When did they tell you to do it? Seven hours ago. In the last seven hours, Solana has been pumping. So this is who you're taking financial advice from. I'm not making this up, by the way. I'm not, I'm not making this up. I, I'm, I'm showing you guys this is this is what's happening. This is this is this is this is how this is breaking out. Okay. Um, but but let's keep going because I feel like I'm I'm you know I'm meandering a little bit and I want to get uh a little bit further along here. Um Ben. Uh, ben does wild stuff. He argues and he fights with people and he throws insults and, and stuff like that, right? Um, they talk about when he uh, extorted and transferred the title to Mr. Diaz. Um, if I get subpoenaed, I will show you the text message. Um, if I if I needed to uh, and somebody recorded the conversation, you can play the recording. Uh, but I was on the phone and had been on the phone multiple times with Ben during this, uh, call it crisis. And, uh, first of all, uh, Ben thought that these people were trying to kill him and he was in fear for his life. Um, this may, uh, in some way violate for Ben, maybe a level of trust that he might have in me, but I feel that it's important to at least uh, let you guys know that, you know, he and I did have these conversations and there were problems and there were issues and there were concerns and there were things that, that he was, he was going through. Um, and he was, he was in trouble, right? He felt like he was in trouble. Um, and I'm just going to read an excerpt here. Thanks, bro. I zoned out. Uh, thank you for your talk last night. Please keep this confidential. Um, they cut me off from the amount of money, um, that I need. Uh, we're going to try to salvage everything. I'm going to do an apology video at, at their request and it might be a rough road back. So I appreciate you. And there's more to it, but that's all I'm going to point out to that. Right. The reason I'm going to say that is because I was on the phone with him when he thought they were going to kill him. When he thought that, uh, Mr. Larry, the cable Diaz, Carlos guy was literally going to, um, do what he did before, which is extort somebody and kidnap them and, and, you know, whatever else he might've done. Okay. So he felt the need at that point to do this. Now, the argument that, that they, by the way, in the emergency hearing successfully made was that, well, the Lamborghini is uh, company property because there was no receipt of Ben actually paying for it out of pocket. Now, Ben does think that everything that he's done in that company is because of him and that he owns and is entitled to everything there. So uh, there are some legal technicalities that would prevent that from actually being a reality. And that's the hard part that, 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 you know, Ben has to go through and he's, he's got, he's going to have to accept and deal with. Um, but uh, it, these things, all of this stuff that's, that's been happening here, um, all of these, you know, pieces kind of falling in place, um, you know, those are real. Now, let me take you a step further. Okay. Uh, because we're not done yet. Now uh, there are three people who filed a lawsuit for, Assault, a sexual assault. Okay. They are unnamed in this report, but I have obtained a copy of a police report uh, showing that this filing was done. And by the way, you can look this up for yourself uh, and you can go to the Ackworth Police Department. And you can look all these up for yourself if you want to uh, go check it out. Now they took statements. Uh, they, they took multiple statements, by the way, um, um, that uh, they said, well, he was getting a gun. And did he, did he show, did, did, did anything happen with the gun? Nope. Did it discharge? Nope. Did it get fired anywhere? Nope. Did it get brandished at anybody? Nope. Are you entitled in Georgia to protect yourself with one? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Uh, anywhere. As a matter of fact, you can do that. Uh, hashtag America, bro. So, um, the, the fact that that happened was because they were trying to paint this narrative. Now who's trying to paint this narrative? Well, the person that lied about Cassie right here, um, the, the, the person that has been selling all the crypto in the company, by the way, in order to satisfy financial obligations for the company, the company that he's supposed to be getting the valuation for that there is no valuation for to this point, 
that's buying deceptive comments all over these ad, like this is crazy right am i am i is this like are you seeing this right if it's not just me i hope it's not just me um that's telling you to <laughs> god damn it they're telling you to sell your solana okay while it's pumping while it's pumping in, in a market that is probably set for you know a potential takeoff you never know but here's what you do know you know in the bull market 97 dollars solana <laughs> you won you won. Uh, you didn't get it at 16. You didn't get it at 50. Uh, do you get it today? Could you get it lower? Maybe. But are you bad today for having it? Nope. So this is this is it. And what else? Um, this, uh, by the way, for, for those of you that want to go look this up, go look it up. Because guess what happened? The resolution was that this was dismissed as unfounded allegations with no basis. So, uh, but again, you can go look that up. You don't need me to tell you. Guys, am I painting you a narrative? Am I painting you a picture yet of, of why my opinion is what my opinion is? Well, let me take it a step further because out here in this video, and you'll have to go find it. You're going to have to go find it because this dude right here, this dude right here, we're going to circle it just a couple of times over here. This dude right here, literally in this interview, pretends like it's different when he was breaking up this marriage. For those of you that don't know, that's Ali Bavan who is now uh, TJ Shedd's wife. And that's Andy Watson, I want to say. Um, and they were married when they got to Hit Network. And they immediately started an affair that Ben Armstrong found out about and brought to TJ's attention. And that caused a rift between them. This is before anything had happened with, um, allegedly, with Cassie or anything like this at this point. Now, who is this person? Well, it's right here. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, here's an interesting tale for you. TJ Shedd's wife, Ali Bavan, began working at Hit Network in summer of 2021 when she was married to Andy Watson. Uh, within two weeks of beginning work, Ali and TJ were already having an affair. Now, when I discovered the affair, I confronted TJ. He said they would stop. They did not. After getting caught by Frank at the neighborhood pool together, I told him it was enough. Now, I guess you got to ask Frank, right? That's Frankie Candles, by the way. So uh, next time you're in Frankie Candles chat, why don't you ask him about it? So then she turned in her notice to quit, right? But it turns out TJ was still paying her, even though she was no longer with the company. He was still paying her. Now, why would he be doing that? Okay. Now, let's take it a step further. Here she is with her uh, cousin, Christine, I want to say. Uh, and this was with Jimmy Zong, the guy who stole $3 billion from Silk Road. This is Jimmy Bitcoin. This is Jimmy Bitcoin by the way. And this is Allie. And this is her friend, Christina. This is with Jimmy Bitcoin. Okay. So what in the F is currently happening now? Uh, according to this document, Jimmy gave Christina 50 Bitcoin. Uh, I guess 50 Bitcoin buys you a character letter, but not an appearance. No one showed up to his hearing. Now there were these three, right? Christina each received 50 Bitcoin of silk chrome crime proceeds valued at about $3.3 .3 million at the time of the search and $1.4 million today uh, in order to write these letters. Now, uh, not to write the letters, but, you know, just because he liked to give money out to people. It's it, 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 it's, a, it's funny, though, because Allie told me he actually gave Christina $10 million in Bitcoin for her wedding, knowing that Jimmy was always in love with her. Don't worry. I think she's divorced now. But unfortunately for Jimmy, $10 million was only enough to get invited to the wedding. Uh, in fact, Allie took advantage of Jimmy. Also, Allie and Christina went on private jets with Jimmy on trips frequently where he would often give his friends $10,000 just to spend. Wait a minute. Andy's wife, Allie, who's now TJ's wife. So... And, and look, for, for the purpose of this, for the purpose of it, you can go check this out for yourself. You do not need me to tell you what to think because I'm giving you my opinion, but it is only my opinion. I think that what I'm telling you are statements of fact generally here when we're having this conversation. So let me clear my throat and summarize. The person that lied to you about $50,000 being paid to Cassie Wolf that was actually being paid by stake.com and had nothing to do with Ben Armstrong or TJ Shedd financially, did, did nothing to do with them. The person that told you that there was a valuation of the company that still to this day has not been there while they continue to sell on it. And by the way, if you go back into the old videos, their wallets are public. You can go look at their wallets and you can see what he's doing with the wallets. I don't have to tell you because then you would think I'm trying to manipulate you. You go look at what the wallets are doing right now. You go look at the assets that are in the wallet. You go see what 
TJ Shed is doing with the cryptocurrency that's in those wallets. And you tell me what he's doing. They're not hard to find. Remember that. They're never hard to find. Uh, then you've got the guy who's buying comments on videos to try to drum up business or to try to convince people who don't perform due diligence, like apparently Lux Algo, who as of this moment, I'm not going to be partnered with anymore. Um, uh, and we're not going to use them, by the way, in our trading view streams or anything like that. We're going to stick with high IQ. And we're going to stick with others for this going forward because that's just a bridge too far. Uh, if you're not doing your due diligence or, or anything like that, then, I mean, come on, what are we doing here? Uh, but uh, 22,000 views. Did they buy 22,000 views and exactly 600 likes? Are you kidding me? Um, uh, and by the way, that was almost 1.5 million subscribers. It's down to 1.4 million. That's how much people don't care. So, but that's not the, the fact that people don't care isn't really an issue here. It's it's that they're they're deceiving you and they're using deceptive practices to try to take advantage of you and to try to get you to pay more attention to them. And they're telling you to sell your Solana, which is actually pumping, uh, while they're telling you to sell it. Uh, and, and then uh, moving on here, uh, they've got unfounded reports from the police. Um, and they've got this wild ass thing going on over here, uh, with Andy Watson's ex-wife. Uh, it was his wife when it started, but you know, and then for some reason, TJ of the, uh, cheating on, uh, cheating with Andy's wife, TJ's TJ goes to the house of Ben Armstrong to tell his wife about his affair uh, and it's something, by the way, again, I'm not defending, I'm not defending anybody, but something that even Nick DeMondi said was too much. He didn't show up. He didn't go to that. Would he have gone? I don't know. I don't know that he was asked. I don't know that he wasn't asked. I know that he said I did not go. And it it sounded to me like uh, when I heard about it, that they had pretty much insinuated that he was going to go, but he he did not go. That seemed to be even a bridge too far for him. So if it was, shout out to Nick DeMondi. Um, that's the only thing I'm gonna shout out. Um, and if you help my friend shout out for that, but, um, guys, do you believe all this? I mean, this is, this is, I, I mean, I'm laying it out for you. Um, so this is what I think is happening. I think that the, the people involved, I don't think that, I don't think, I think Nick just doesn't like Ben Armstrong is what I think. I, I think that he just doesn't like Ben Armstrong. I think that Tim Warren, uh, DZ, their entertainment talent, their, their enhancement talent for a show. Uh, I don't think they really kind of cared one way or another. I think they need their jobs and maybe they don't like Ben Armstrong. You don't have to like your boss in order to work for your boss. Um, I think that TJ and TJ's father have been setting up a deceptive means by which they could take over the company at some point, maybe because they felt like they had a valid reason. Ben, you know, he runs a little hot sometimes. So uh, I'm not saying that 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 Ben, by the way, is blameless on anything. I'm saying that I took a side. And my side was the guy who wasn't getting his company stolen from him. Because at the end of the day, if you are a 33% owner of a company and you don't like the guy who owns the company, who legitimately owns the company, uh, you take your money and you leave the company and you make that guy pay you and buy you out. Well, instead... Ben made the mistake of considering this boy his friend. That was a mistake. That's the mistake that Ben Armstrong made in this, was to trust TJ Shedd. He made the mistake of believing, <laughs> I use my own name for that, that this guy was honest when, in fact, he knew he was deceptive. He knew that he would cheat at any given moment. He knew what TJ would be willing to do. In fact, one of the allegations that they made against Ben steroids. And Ben Armstrong said, yeah, of course I did steroids. So did TJ. I've never met somebody, by the way, in which steroids apparently have no effect on. It's crazy, huh? Um, but maybe, just maybe, um, they were a little more swole and a little more buff when they were more buddy-buddy. You know what I mean? So, uh, it, it, so, but, but Ben says it and look, um, there's going to be moments, there's going to be moments where, uh, you're going to see things that, that just kind of freak you out. These are things like freak me out. Like I, I look at this stuff and I'm like, I, I, I no, like, like he can't be doing, come on anyway. But one thing he was doing. So all of these pieces, all of these pieces, they, they all fall into place and they tell this tale, this narrative of someone who's been setting up to take this company from somebody. And again, I, you know, I don't, I can't, I, here's what I think. I think they stole the company. Now, 
The other piece to it is I think they decided that they were going to, let's call it take over the company because that's what they will say. They took over the company because they felt that Ben Armstrong was not paying attention. Now, why was Ben Armstrong not paying attention? Uh, well, Bencoin. They don't like the fact that Ben was on Bencoin. Now, there are some allegations that because uh, they didn't like Bencoin because Bencoin was not a pump and dump the way that Bambi was. And if you don't know what Bambi was, that was something for Justin Williams. And if you need to ask Justin Williams what Bambi is, then I suggest you reach out to Justin Williams and you ask him what Bambi is. And one time Ben mentioned Bambi. And when Ben mentioned Bambi, and I knew at that point that Ben Armstrong probably had no business mentioning or saying anything about Bambi, then I knew something was afoot. But if you want to know about Bambi and why Bambi basically rugged, go ask Justin Williams. Now, where did that money go? I don't know. Justin Williams is the president of Vumeo. Vumeo is a company with a $3 million investor uh, stake for a company. And I don't know where the $3 million is, but I know that Justin is in charge of it and that Ben invested $700,000 into it. Now, to be fair here, Ben invested $700,000 of what will probably amount to hit networks money into it. So when Ben says that he did it, I think that they'll probably argue successfully that it was corporate funds, if you know what I mean. Uh, but then that leads us back to the corporate funds. You can go check all of the wallets because it's in all the old, uh, it, you can go check it out and you can go see the wallets have been drained. They've taken the money. Um, now what are they doing with the money? Well, um, it is my belief that they can't fund their business. They can't fund their enterprise anymore. Now, I do think that that Ben Armstrong made several of these guys pretty wealthy, uh, or he made them at least rich enough that they are uh, probably not struggling. However, that doesn't fix a business that's probably at this point failing, which is why Blowfin and Lux Algo are on the hook. Um, because look, the views are not there. You go go count the views. 100 bucks for every 1,000 views. If you're lucky, more likely uh, you're going to get um, 10 bucks for every 1,000 views. Uh, I want to say uh, maybe 8 bucks, something like that. You know, that's that's the number, by the way. So if you want to go look at how much money they're pulling in and then go count the number of heads that they have and then go figure out how they're able to afford it, go ahead. Go figure it out because they don't have that state contract. They don't have – and look, Blowfin can't pay them that much. They're not worth that much. And Blowfin knows that. So does Lux Algo. Um, so look around and you tell me what it is that you see. So I'm positing this, that – TJ thought he could just take it over. Everything would just be fine. And he found out that nobody, nobody cares about Discover Crypto. And they are now struggling to find people who will help support them. They don't have sponsors. They don't have revenue. They're not bringing in money. They are liquidating crypto assets like crazy. They are liquidating properties like crazy. Remember the legal document that I gave you the other day? They're trying to sell off the properties, why are they selling off the properties? Why are they doing all of this? Because they don't have any money. What is the end goal of this? Well, it's my belief, and I haven't said this to, to, to Ben yet, by the way, but it's my belief that they are going to strip the company down. They're going to drain the company of all of the money, and then they're going to end up bankrupting it. And then TJ will probably offer a settlement to try to uh, claw back something, and he will offer Ben the Bitcoin name or you know, discover crypt after it's worthless. So he can turn it back to hit networks. Um, uh, yeah, you know, I think that that's really how this plays out. I, I don't think that, um, I mean, look around. Do you think discover crypto is discovering anything? Because nobody's discovering discover crypto. Viewership's not going up. It's going down. Um, they're the grayscale Bitcoin trust of Bitcoin ETFs right now. They're the ones that are bleeding and it's not slowing down by the way. So, you know, the question would be what to do now. Do you believe that, um, and, and look, you don't have to trust Ben Armstrong. You don't have to trust anybody in this scenario. You cannot like anybody along the way, but you must ask yourself, they lied about the money. They deceive you about the valuation of the company. They make up comments and views. They tell you to sell your Solana. Oh my God, I still can't believe they're doing that. This is, that is bonkers to me. Uh, they have an unfounded allegation here for um, uh, sexual assault or assault, uh, man on man. Um, 
uh, from Ben Armstrong, who's married and has a great, and look, by the way, I'm not judging, by the way, uh, a man, uh, if, a, if a man likes another man, whatever, but I don't think that Ben does. I think that he thinks that it's funny to joke about, but I don't think that that's actually how it plays out. And then you have this, that uh, ye old teacher's wife, uh, Andy Watson's ex-wife, by the way, um, is hanging out with Jimmy Bitcoin and her cousin, Christina, got $10 million from uh, from the old Jimster. And what did Hallie get? You know what I mean? Like, ask yourself. I mean, here's the thing. Stop me when I'm telling lies. That's all I ask. Stop me when I'm telling lies. So if you ask me what I think, I think that they're trying to ruin the company because uh, they want to keep it afloat, by the way. I think Nick wants to keep it afloat. I think DJ, uh, D, D, G, D, Z, Jesus, I can't remember the guy's name. Deezer, D, D, Z, D, Z, D, Z wants to keep the company alive. Joshua Jake probably wants to keep the company alive. Uh, Joshua Jake probably doesn't care because he can go back to TikTok and he can still make his money off of TikTok. So I don't think that he really cares, but, you know, or I think that he cares, but, you know, you get my point. Like he can, he can go do whatever. Um, I, I think that, that Tim and whoever's left over there, um, those guys, they want to make the company successful. They want to have a successful company and they're really trying to ride out the bear market thinking that maybe they can just survive. And if they survive, then perhaps they can thrive when it gets to the bull market. Right. Um, and they're liquidating everything to make that happen. And now they can't pay Ben because they're taking it all and they're taking it all because they're taking it in order to fund the company that they're failing at, at running. So, uh, very complicated. And, uh, you know, at some point something's going to play out and something's going to pan out. Um, the, uh, judge for the, the case was sick. Uh, they're going to be hearing it shortly and then we'll have some more information for you as soon as that's done. So, uh, until then, this is my opinion about everything. And, you know, I, I joke that I'm always right, but I'm not always right. I have an opinion. This is my opinion about what's going on. Uh, if you ask me what I'm doing here, uh, if you ask me uh, what I believe in, um, I believe in Ben Armstrong. I don't believe in everything that Ben Armstrong says. I don't believe in everything that Ben Armstrong does. Ben Armstrong believes in the attention economy and he likes to work the attention economy. I admire that. I do like that. I think that that's interesting and, 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 and I follow that just because I don't do it doesn't mean, uh, or just because I don't do all of it doesn't mean that I don't appreciate and admire the fact that he does, <laughs> um, and sometimes he, he does things that make me go, wow, but that's because he believes in the attention economy and he understands better than me what that attention economy means. So I will just give you my opinion and tell you that I'm going to support Ben because uh, I think that when this all settles, the dust is, is done. The Ben Armstrong crypto experience, I have a million subscribers, uh, discover crypto if it's still even around you know, might still have 1.4 million subscribers for all I know, but nobody's going to tune in. Nobody's going to watch them. You know, it's just, you know, they're going to be, if you look at it, uh, and you know, by the way, whatever, whatever they do, when they try to get their come up or they try to do something, um, Ben's going to put a channel out and it's going to be like right up against them. So, you know, um, they're not going to win. They're, they're not going to win. So if I had eggs to put in the basket, I would put them on Ben. So that's my opinion. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, if you if you stuck with me for all, I said probably, like, probably an hour of me just ranting on about this. Uh, if you're stuck with me for this long, uh, make sure you give me a like. Uh, if you like the content, give me a follow. Uh, we'll be talking about this or some portion of this at, at some point in the future. But that right there is a little bit of an update on what has been going on, what I think of what all of this is and how it's played out. And uh, wow, it's been a crazy ride. And you know what? It's going to continue. So uh, we'll talk to you again very, very soon.